I'm Krishna. I'm having 10 years of industrial experience working for a global MNCs as a lead cloud engineer and database architect. Also, I'm having a four years of experience in a corporate training. Hi, everyone. Welcome to KSR Data Vision Snowflake Driving Program. Today, here we are discuss about a particular data warehousing problem statement and resolving the same using the Snowflake services. So moving on to the first slide. Okay. So we are going to discuss a Snowflake problem statement generally happens in a project. Okay. And how we are going to resolve it using an access history is one of the service or one of the metadata service we can call it's existing in a Snowflake and how we are going to use it today to resolve the problem. So reading the first slide. So let's understand what is a problem here first. Okay. Usually in the projects, right, there will be some unknown jobs, right? It's been identified. The company have a problem saying that in a project, it's been identified. There are some unknown jobs are accessing a schema called loan underscore employee in a bank DB and running queries against multiple tables. Okay. So uh, with that reason, what management is trying to do here? Management raised a request with development team that is with proper access who have an access for the services and admin team or an admin team to identify what are all the tables are getting accessed and when these are these tables are getting accessed and what is the role or what is the user account is trying to access these tables. Right. The problem here, what management has been uh, you know, identified is the impact of this one is the jobs utilizing warehouses, okay, which are which are unknown to the current management, okay, and it's growing the credit spends. That means it is increasing the billing cost for them, okay. They don't know who is using that, but there are some queries executing, and there is a lot of you know um, warehouse is getting used and billing is increasing there, okay. So management wants to analyze the purpose of these jobs and take an appropriate action on it, right? So what their main problem is, there are some unidentified jobs in a current, uh, you know, BAU process. And they want to understand what kind of uh, queries are to those and who is exactly using that data, we, whether that particular tables are really important to be there and who are using it. Okay. So now we understand the problem statement. Okay. How can we resolve this one? This kind of issues appears everywhere. When it happens in, in on-premise also, this kind of issues happens at a lot of uh, you know the companies or the projects. So it usually maintains by a DBA teams. So DBA teams will run some analytical queries in backend and they will understand the what is really is causing. Okay. So to understand these things and all in management side, uh, in a DB side, what they need to do is they have to go into a metadata which they are maintaining. Okay, for on premise, what happens is they will have their own specific tables will be created at the time of installing. Okay, so here in metadata in, in Snowflake, there is nothing you have to take an extra effort here. So every action and every inch of your metadata, that is whatever you are doing on a Snowflake will be captured on a Snowflake automatically. This all will be handled by a Snowflake team itself. So the, so the things are already ready for our usage. Only thing is how we are going to use and identify this is something we will see it in this next slides. Okay, so how we are going to use it? Snowflake database. Okay, whenever you 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 created your account with the Snowflake, right? In backend, there is a Snowflake database will get created. Okay, inside Snowflake database, there will be a different kinds of schemas. Okay, that is an account schema. Account user schemas are there like that. There will be information schemas and many, many other schemas will be there inside a Snowflake database. Okay. Let's understand what is account usage. Okay. So account user schema, right? In Snowflake database, the account user schema enable querying objects metadata as well as historical usage data for your account and all reader accounts, if any, associated with the account. So what it means, so anything you can do, any object, any table or any view or anything you try to query or you do some action on top of it, your account underscore usage schema will store all that information for you for your analysis. So it's a metadata. That's like when you have executed, who is the user it has executed, what he tried to access, what is the query ID it is generated, okay, when it has completed. Okay, what baseline tables it has used, what is the direct object you have used, 
what does it mean example you have you have queried a view okay that particular account usage will show you that you are directly accessed a view but indirectly you accessed the tables inside that view okay like this account usage will capture all this information okay including a historical usage data that means account usage will capture this kind of information for 365 days that is for one year okay the reason the account usage right similarly to the account usage in any schema if you take any schema you create in a snowflake there is a two schemas okay any database you create in a snowflake there will be a two schemas will automatically generated in your databases okay snowflake will automatically generate one is a information schema and one is a public schema public schema is to create your objects information schema is to have the metadata of your schema okay now there will be a slight difference between the account usage which is on account level okay information schema which is in a schema level okay there are few difference so it's similar kind of account usage views mirror the corresponding views and table functions in snowflake even information schema also have similar kind of functionalities only thing is there are few difference in that let's see what are the difference in the next slide so if you see the difference between the account usage and the information schema so account usage we thought it's on a account level information schema is on a schema level right so if you see difference it includes dropped objects okay account usage will capture that information for one year okay but information schema will not have the dropped information right if you drop the view if you drop the table if you drop the files file you know file formats or something so any object if you drop that information will not be captured in information schema but account usage will have that information for one year okay latency of the data right from 45 minutes to 3 hours varies by view because the account usage is going to be a very huge so as i said every action on your account is going to be captured that means if there are 100 people are working on your account that each one is running a 10 10 queries in a day that means 1000 lines of information is going to available in account schema okay a thousand lines of code for a 365 days is going to be huge okay as i just take a 10 queries and a developer will usually run more than that so it's a millions and millions of data it's going to store in account usage right that's the reason there is a quite some latency will be there okay in information schema you won't be having that latency because it only belongs to that particular schema okay and also it stores the data only for a one week okay majorly one week or to six months it's based on the setup you are going to have on your account level okay retention of the historical data right so you see account usage is for the one year you can able to have it this for one year information schema you can have it from 7 days to 6 months varies by view or the table function so it's a varies based on the setup you are going to do it on the information schema okay that's the difference now if we if, if, just to reiterate that what is a problem statement there are some jobs running in a backend and accessing some tables in a particular schema that schema called loan underscore employee okay inside a bank database and your management doesn't know that how what who is executing that and what are the base tables it is executing and what base tables are not running in that schema from the last one year okay and impact is they are they are using the warehouses and it is increasing the cost and our billing rates are also increasing now right so let's understand so how can we resolve it right so i will switch back it to the snowflake snowflake ui so let's go to snowflake ui so i will be just running to use my warehouses warehouse database and schema okay you could see yeah so loan underscore employee right so loan underscore employee is saying l o n e m p l o y e e okay schema right my bad it is written as this one okay yeah so i my context is changed to relevant information that's why i'm using a snowflake training bank is the database and loan schema is the table i'm using so my problem statement is in this database in this particular schema okay there are some jobs are running and utilizing a lot of tables okay so how you could able to understand as just we discussed in the snowflake database okay account usage usage is the schema 
which will have all your object information history what what action has been happened on top of it and you want to access history here okay that means from now onwards to history okay what are all the actions has been happened on the particular schema okay so you need only for a particular schema so i just mentioned here if you see i mentioned just like a bank is my database and the loan is um, you know loan employees my uh, schema here okay how you are going to run so before we go and uh, run this statement right and before i explain this one so let's just quickly see what are all the details will be available in this okay i'm just right from if you see it took little time literally 4.13 seconds because there is a lot of metadata inside that okay so now you see it it have the query id that means that you have executed a particular query for every in in a snowflake for every uh, action there is a query id will be generated unique query id so it is showing a query id when the query has started who executed this query the username is a learning at ksr okay that's the user i am using and directly you you know you access the objects so what is the direct object you have utilized here if you go back you can see here in a bank database loan schema you used a employees underscore temp is the table you have used okay so and it is saying in case if you used a view right so it will what it will say directly you accessed a view and indirectly in inside a view what are all the tables you have utilized okay and this is object modified you have modified any objects that modified object information is also action will be taken care so in this you are modified some act, uh, something in a table so it is saying that you have modified an object okay so all this metadata we are able to see now to our problem statement what management is mostly interested on what are all the tables are the views what are the objects are getting used by that unknown jobs right so how much how much frequency I mean, what are the tables are getting used in the particular schema, right? So what I'm trying to do here, it is if you see this direct objects and baselined objects, right? This objects the information is in a JSON format. In the backend, while it is loading into your metadata, everything is turned up into your JSON formats. To parse the JSON format, you have a two flattened operations. That is a literal, lateral and a table. Okay, so I'm using a lateral here. Okay, the purpose of this lateral, right? So we can use a lateral, you know, lateral flatten function to explode arrays into an individual JSON objects. Okay, so you can try this functionality running for a multiple ways. So you can try with the you know table flatten, little flatten with the different read readability powers also. Okay, so I am here as I am lateral flatten I am using. Okay, and you see, I see I have given a column called base objects accessed. So that this is the column I'm interested in. Okay, let's run this one. So if I run this statement, it will give me the, all the tables it's been used. Okay, in that schema. So what it is saying, there are nine rows. Okay, in that schema being used. So this is saying employee underscore temp, and this is employee underscore trans. Like that, employee underscore trans I have used it for multiple times. When and all I executed on the table, so you can just go here. It is it shows that when the query I have executed. Okay. In case if you want to see what is the exact query has executed, there is an other table called as a query history. Either you can query the table, or if you have an individual thing, just like if I I want to see only one one this particular first one, what is the query it has executed, right? So all you need to do is copy this, go to history. Okay. In this query ID, just you give your query ID. And just search it okay so you got a query id now so you searched it so you see this this is the first one shows that the query id so one sec let me quickly share it yeah so you see this is the query id you have seen you want to see what query it has executed just click this one or in the sql text also you can see so i just executed select start from the employees Okay, and you could see the profile also how how much time it has taken. It's a it's a query plan. Okay, this we will discuss in the further sessions as well. Okay, so now we got the all the details. So what is the next action? What we will do is we will share this information with the management team, saying that this particular you know tables are getting used by all these jobs. Or in this particular schema, these are all the tables being queried at this particular time. Identify what is a common time and understand what jobs are running at the same time. 
right? So if I switching back to this one, switching back to slides, what we understand, what is the outcome or what is the results, you know, they got it right out of this one. So they understand highly used tables and schema has been identified. So they could able to do an optimization based on that usage. And also the other benefit of running this analysis, right? If you see in a particular schema, okay, what are all the tables being used is something we got a list. Okay. That means for last 365 days, what are the tables being used list? We got it. There are some tables missing in that list. What that means is that tables are either redundant, which is not used by any process and someone is actually created and there is some data inside that, which is causing an impact to your storage, right? So now business can take a decision based on the results we fetched with that proper actions for cost and storage optimization is possible here. Right. So both is possible. They could either stop the jobs and not running here, or they can remove the redundant tables, save some cost over here. Okay. I hope this video helped you to understand the usage of the metadata services, right? And providing by Snowflake and same will be used in your project as well. Right. The metadata services we are getting from um, uh, Snowflake, right? So the same you can use it in your project as well whenever you get some kind of similar kind of issue okay and uh, thanks for watching this video okay stay tuned to this page for more information on snowflake cloud data warehouse thank you so much